Hey, welcome to my channel. This is the first video of a small series in which I'll be teaching you how to use the version 2 of the JavaScript library Barba.js. Usually, when you open a website and go from one of its pages to the other, the typical scenario is that your browser makes a request to the server and then the server sends back the page that you are trying to access. That means that every time you open a new page, the entire content of that page is loaded, including some parts that are common between every page of the website, such as the navigation menu, the footer, and maybe some other common elements depending on the design of the website. That behavior affects the user experience in two points. The first disadvantage is that the user's client keeps loading and reloading the common parts unnecessarily, which hurts the performance of the website. The second disadvantage is that since the loading of the requested page doesn't happen instantly, that creates a delay between the exit of the current page and the entrance of the next one, hence the transition between the two pages can be quite poor. If you are familiar with single page applications, you may probably think that using a framework such as Angular could solve those problems. Well, in fact that might be a good option if your website needs the framework to solve more problems other than only those two. If not, then that would be an overkill. That being said, fortunately there were smart people who thought about that and created a nice lightweight JavaScript library called Barba.js. So what Barba.js essentially does is to put the content of the page inside the wrapper and within this wrapper we have two types of elements. The first type is composed of the elements that we don't want to update on each page request, the navigation menu for instance because it's the same on every single page. The second type represents the dynamic content which is different on every page. This kind of elements needs to be included within a parent node called container. Once that done, the visitor gets just the content of the container that belongs to the cached page instead of making another request to the server. Therefore, every time the visitor clicks on a link, a request is sent to the server once, then the content of the requested page gets cached. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next part of this tutorial.